means we're putting a major focus into exploration and uh, acquiring some other projects. They will be a series of projects that we call a pipeline so that uh, we will have grassroots exploration, we will have development projects, and we might even uh, be out uh, lucky enough to find some sort of producing or near producing asset that we can acquire and convert that to our ownership. So we're in the process of developing that pipeline of projects. We now have cash flow, and I think the, uh, the rise in our share price is increasing our market cap to the point where we can use our stock as part of the currency for acquisitions. So we're very much uh, on the path of growth. Well, there's a series of news releases. We've got a lot going on at the moment. We uh, successfully raised and closed uh, a financing for 13 million Canadian dollars. That enabled us to make uh, certain other announcements, which I can go into in a minute. Following that, that gave us the funds to close the acquisition of a large land package, 32,000 acres, which is continuous and adjacent to the existing land that we have where we've built our plant. So that gives us many years of exploration ground to work on and uh, potentially expand and extend the life of the uh, project. And then uh, finally, we've recently announced that we've reached commercial production, which is of course a large milestone significant milestone for a gold producer. The next steps for us are to expand the plant so that we can increase production from the same plant because we have other reserves and resources around the area that are uh, very close to the production plant. They're within economic cartage distance and uh, mostly they're within sight, within one or two kilometres. And that is a big step for the company. We will take the plant from its present capacity of about 400,000 tonne a year up to in the order of a million tonnes per year. So it's a big jump. The evidence that we have a good relationship is that we have built this plant in record time. From acquiring the project as a a bare project with no infrastructure, no development whatsoever on the site. In uh, June 2007, we took one year to do confirmation drilling to make sure that we had all of our uh, facts correct. And then in December 2008, which is uh, 18 months later, we announced that we were going to construction. So within uh, 10 months of that date, we were able to announce that we had actually built the plant and poured gold. And if you look about the industry and look at the records of the bulk of the companies, uh, they, they can't achieve and have not historically achieved anything like that. And the big lead time or the long lead time item is generally permitting and approval from governments around the world. And uh, they drag their feet, they charge a lot of money, and that has not happened to us in Malaysia. We, so that, I think, demonstrates the good working relationship with the government. Of course, on the back of that, we employ all of the locals. We have built that plant with local labour. We have trained those people to not only be construction people, but we've then retrained them to become operators. So we have 158 staff on that site, and uh, only two of them are expats. The rest of them are local Malaysians, and they do a heck of a job. This year we've produced gold at a cash cost of $226 per ounce, which is amongst the lowest in the industry for that size project. And uh, our average for the first five-year pit will be 317, and we're just announcing that shortly in our financials. They'll be filed in a day or two, so by the time this goes to air, that will be public information. We focus on safety. We have had to train people that are used to walking around in bare feet. No safety equipment, no hard hats, no uh, steel cap boots, no safety glasses. And if you go to the site today, you'll see that they are all equipped with that sort of uh, clothing. Uh, so we make sure that these people are trained. 
and that is a mandate of the company that we have to do that. We uh, maintain our operations based on Canadian standards, not on the standards of the country that we go to where they might be something less. In addition to that, we maintain Canadian environmental standards and we are fully permitted by the Malaysian government, but we make sure that it's done to Canadian standards, international standards. So we run a very, very tight environmental program and we also run a reclamation program so that we make good any damage that we do through mining and uh, road construction, exploration roads, drill pads and so on. We make sure that they are made good before we leave that particular area. So I think we are good husbands of the, of the environment uh, in that location. These politicians, like politicians everywhere in the world, want to get re-elected. The voters in those villages in that area are our workers. Those workers want permits, they want jobs, they want things to continue the way they are going. They're very, very happy. And so if their members do the right thing and get us the permits, those employees have virtually permanent jobs. So the parents can send their kids to school on a scholarship funded by us. They can learn on computers acquired and purchased by us. They can go right through to university. They be can, can become a mining engineer. Uh, we will provide them work experience while they go through that process. And we will provide them with a job at the end of that process. So the politicians know this. So they don't hold their hand out for uh, that sort of reward. They get their reward by getting re-elected by the community that in turn works for us. I like a challenge and some of these jobs are a real challenge. It's what motivates me, it's what gets me out of bed in the morning, it's what keeps me in a plane flying around the world and uh, I, I have a very busy schedule, but it's very gratifying to see the results coming at the end of that process, to see a lot of people with their, their lot in life being improved. These people now have, uh, they have a job, they have a higher living standard, they have an education for themselves and training for themselves, they have a, a growth path for their children, they have health care, they have insurance, they have lots of things that they didn't have before we came to town. So they want to keep that going. And uh, I think that's something that uh, I personally can be proud of and the company particularly can be very, very proud of. So that's what motivates us as a team. And it's not just me. We have built a very, very good team. I'm a busy guy and I don't just build mines and projects. I build management teams that can run this. We are putting succession plans in place Nobody can do these sorts of things forever. We have to have replacements, we have to have depth of management, uh, and we have to have all of the training programs so that there's an ongoing growth path for employees within the company. And uh, so those are just some of the challenges in building a company. It's not just building a something in the jungle and uh, it spits out gold bars. It's far more deep than that. <laughs>